Hello, people of the internet. My name is Preston, and I am the programmer at Leafy Games. And I'm George, the artist. We wanted to throw together a little short video. It's going to be a little more technical, and uh, it's going to be basically a bunch of camera tricks that we use uh, in, during the development of Pulsar that we sort of developed as we uh, ran into certain limitations uh, with Unity. So it might be useful for other developers uh, or enthusiasts, anyone who kind of wants to know behind the scenes of games. I, I wouldn't say we developed them, maybe, but like the first one would be... First one is yeah. relatively common, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, we, we, we put our own spin on it. Yeah, and yeah. the second one is, is a little bit unique and it really only kind of works for our game anyway, so yeah. Um, or at least the game very, very similar to ours, I guess. Um, but yeah, we'll go over those uh, right now. So the first one, the, the more common one, is to use two cameras to enable both really good looking objects at a great distance and high detail up close. This is normally, this can be a little bit of an issue for a, just a regular Unity camera. And by combining two cameras with different settings, you can achieve uh, a really good looking effect. So you get the, kind of the best of both worlds. So as an example, we have a, a little uh, example here. Presentation, so I can. I can this is our exterior camera. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sort of modifying our exterior camera to get r remove the benefit. So I'm just setting its near clip very close. And you'll notice uh, if you look at the station as I'm moving around, you can see these pixel. You can see these inaccuracies as the system doesn't have enough precision to define those uh, that geometry at that distance. So, and that's because we set the near clip to so small, with the far clip being so large. It essentially. There's a fixed amount of precision for that camera, and we're stretching it too far. So that's related to the fix. So I can go ahead and set it to uh, another value, and then uh, that removes the problem because it, that range is much more controlled now. So that's the first trick. Relatively simple. A good number of games do it. Um, and yeah, we had a little help on that one too. So <laughs> um, with the uh, Oculus VR forums and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of helpful people there who are doing similar tricks for the same reason. Um, there's, a, there's another trick we do, and that's uh, a little bit different, a bit more unique to our case, and that's related to uh, precision away from the origin. So as you render something away from the origin, Unity only has a certain amount of precision, and the farther away you go, the less of it you get. And this was an extreme problem for us when you rent when it, the interior is attached to the ship it's just inside the ship as the ship moves everything inside moves with it so as you're um, and we're going to give you a little yeah a little kind of example here so in game you can't notice it but we're running this in the editor so and the editor does not have this trick so it kind of breaks down the editor so you can see that the interior is actually it's located uh, very close to the origin, and you can and you saw earlier the ship above it. Yeah. So what we can do if you, yeah if you go back in game, you can uh, move the ship. We can move the ship, and you'll see it. Uh, yeah. And if you go back to the scene view, you'll see that the interior is not actually moving. And that's, of course, to keep it really, really nice and close to the origin, to keep all that detail up close to the camera. It also ended up simplifying some of the other systems of the game. Uh, it turns out that having an interior that moves with the ship can be a technical challenge. For, <laughs> for a lot, that's for, probably an understatement. <laughs> for, for, for a number of systems. So reverting back and using this camera trick, we can get the illusion of everything moving, being perfectly synced without actually uh, having the ship interior move. So um, there's, there's been an advantage to that. So just just the rotation of it alone helps with stuff like pathfinding and AI and and even stuff like particle systems where like if you create a simple smoke system that you want it to go up, like before when the ship would rotate, depending on the ship's orientation, that smoke would go up in a different direction. Like, little stuff like that kind of, it's nice when the, the level is more static and it acts more like more games are built this way. There's not many games where a level actually moves and rotates and, and does all that stuff. 
Yeah, it, it's a. But of yeah. course, we didn't want to give up the standing on a starship as it moves around, and we haven't had to do this camera trick. So. Um, another a little detail which I think really helps sell is it is that um, the exterior camera. And I say that in quotes, but you can't see those. Um, actually moves slightly um, based on the, the player's position in the ship. So you can see there's sort of a parallax effect. It's, it's very subtle because things out there just are still very far away and very large. But you can kind of see that, and I think that just is a really nice uh, subtle effect. Um, yeah, well, essentially what we're doing, and, and I, I can go a little bit more technical into it, is we're attaching the close camera to the interior, and that doesn't move. And the other camera is actually attached to the ship. And then we use some math to figure out essentially where your, your eye position is on the inside. And we take the relative position of that to the ship and then, you know, and then transform that onto the ship's rotation and position so that everything matches. Um, and, and yeah, I think we think it's a pretty convincing effect. And there's still a, a bit more to do with it. But for the most part, it works quite well. So I probably know what you're thinking right now. If the if the interior is static, how can, how do the lights move? <laughs> um, like see the sunlight. How does it maintain its effect on the uh, exterior properly, but also dynamically change the interior? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. We use we use a set of lights, a pair of lights, to light the interior and exterior objects completely separately and we apply the math so we, we, we invert that and we do it all correctly so that it's it looks convincing. So as you move the ship, the interior light is the one cast in shadows on the inside. So we move that in the inverse direction of your ship even though your interior isn't moving at all. We're essentially, because the interior isn't moving, we have to apply the inverse effect of the light to give the, the, give the effect of everything moving, and that you're right, that adds a lot to the effect. I almost see, forgot about that. So. Yeah, we're still just sitting here in the, at, the, at the center, and the, the quality is it's the editor, but you can kind of see the the light. You know, this is actually what the player would see if we didn't have that exterior camera. You know, so yeah, that's a good point. And you can see in game, that's of course not at all what it looks like. So there you see the disconnect between the editor and the in-game systems. So yeah, this isn't an entirely relative system. I know a few people suggested that uh, thought that we were actually moving the entire universe while the ship was on origin, but it's sort of a 50-50 mix, and it was a lot easier to put together than an entirely new relative system like uh, some games do. <laughs> yeah, um, but in the it, we kind of achieved the same effect in the end. So for the most part, for the most part. So yeah, thanks, thanks guys for watching. Is that is that all, George? I think that's pretty much it. There's probably a million things you forgot, but let's see. There's always a million things. But <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a little bit more technical. Next week we'll be back uh, with a new update, and we'll be talking about all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, hope you guys. Uh, yeah, we're we're pretty excited. Uh, we're pretty excited. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to we don't want to give away yet because we're not we, we, you know. We, we want to get it to you guys first because it's one. It's just one of those things. So yeah. <laughs> um, but thanks, thanks guys for watching, and we will see you guys next week. Enjoy. Have a good one. Bye. Bye bye.